أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome back to Ramadan Reflections today being the 20th day of the blessed month of Ramadan a day which should have been marked as a day of happiness because we are within the last 10 days these nights of Qadr, these nights of power, the days of grandeur the days which follow the nights of power are thought to be you know, blessed days but here we are commemorating the martyrdom of the greatest man to ever walk this earth after the Messenger of Allah. Today is our second of three in the special series on the commander of the faithful. You know, he was born 30 years after the year of the elephant. At a time when the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah bless him and his family, when he announced his prophethood at the age of 40 on the 27th of Rajab, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace be upon him, was a mere 10 years old, a young boy. However, having been, having been lived, uh, living rather in the house of the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah bless him and his family, and Lady Khadija bint Khawailid, Umm al muminin may God's peace and blessings be upon her for at least a period of five years, from the age of five till about the age of ten. He had definitely acquired a strong affinity and a bond to the beloved messenger. It was, wasn't just a cousin-to-cousin -cousin relationship. It was much deeper than that. And he would obviously speak about this relationship in Najul Balagha of, of many of the sources where Imam Ali would speak. And he has, has been quoted as re, re, recalling that relationship. And it's no wonder, you know, that Imam Ali alayhi salam would become the first man to accept the message of Islam. Because the day that the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah bless him and his family, received the first verses of Surah Al-Alaq, and he came back to his house in Mecca, Imam Ali al Islam was again a young boy of 10 years old in the house. <clears throat> and he became the first man to believe in the Prophet, with Khadija, peace be upon her, being the first woman to accept the message of Islam. You know, history is all but silent on the specifics as it relates to Imam Ali, peace be upon him, and him living with the Prophet and Khadija, peace be upon both of them. However, we do have some glimpses of the relationship which we touched upon yesterday. However, once the revelation began and Imam Ali alayhi salam officially accepted Islam, this new set of teachings. Now I say officially um, because I don't doubt he was always a believer. He was born a Muslim. He was born submitting to God. I mean, he was born in the Kaaba. He was born to Abu Talib and Fatima bint Asad, peace be upon both of them. People who were staunch believers in one God, who followed the tradition of Prophet Ibrahim, being of the Hanif, the Hunafa living that first five years with his father Abu Talib and his mother Fatima bint Asad, peace be upon them both, and then transferring to the house of Rasulullah and Khadija, peace be upon them, who were both also believers in one God. They didn't worship idols. Their face never prostrated to the gods, the so-called gods in the Kaaba. He would never have been introduced to the idols and polytheistic ways, the drinking and the merrymaking and the, the you know, the all the forbidden that was taking place in that society. He was never a part of it. And so this next phase of his life, which runs from the age of 10 when he uh, comes into the fold officially of Islam, until the age of 23, which is the time in the city of Mecca, <clears throat> this 13 years is one which he would spend exclusively in and around the company of the Messenger of Allah, the Prophet Muhammad, May Allah bless him and his family and be a direct part and parcel of the mission. Historians note that it was on a Monday when the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah bless him and his family, went through the event of the Ba'tha. And the next day, that is Tuesday, Imam Ali accepted Islam and followed the words of his cousin and now his messenger, his prophet. And historically speaking, who else can come to such a close track record of com coming into the fold of pure submission to the one true God. Now the early days of this new faith were unique in that the message had to be propagated, but in secrecy. So we don't know much about the role of Imam Ali in those days. We know he was with the Prophet. He would explain even in Ajul Balagha that he would be in the company of the messenger when revelation would come. He would experience much of what the Prophet was experiencing, but he is not a Prophet. However, the first major... Uh, test, we can say, or the first major opportunity for Imam to show his faith and his commitment and devotion to the message 
happens in the fourth year after the invitation. This is where the 214th verse of Surah Ash-Shu'ara, chapter 26, comes to the messenger, advising him to warn his nearest relatives, the da'wat of Dhul Ashira. Now we spoke about this already in one of our earlier sessions, um, but it's important to note here that you know this event in which the Prophet had his young cousin Ali prepare invitations, prepare a banquet for 40 people, the chiefs of the Quraysh, happened when the Imam Ali was 14 years old. He was in making invitations, he was cooking food for 40 people, preparing a, a, a dinner banquet, because this is what the Prophet required from him. And he would do whatever the Prophet wanted him to do, not only then, but during his entire life. An impressive feat for a young child of 14, you know. In our culture today, a child of 14 is uh, in grade 9 or so. They can barely make their own lunch or their own dinner, right? And now the Imam Ali is cooking for 40 people. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wondrous thing to think about. And this was obviously that groundbreaking event, as we touched upon previously, that the Prophet would invite his family to accept Islam and to accept him as the final messenger. And the Prophet would also call for a spiritual supporter in his mission. And although the Prophet would make this call multiple times in that gathering over the course of two nights when this dinner transpired, none of the 40 elders pledged their support. None of them. The Prophet kept re renewing the invitation. People sat silent. People, the Prophet would renew it. People would remain silent. Until finally one man could no longer bear the silence. That 14-year-old boy Ali stands up and pledges his support. And the Prophet replies that you are my wazir, or he says, this is my wazir, my successor, and my vicegerent. Listen to him and obey his commands. And the Quraysh felt this to be a joke, that they told Abu Talib, now you have to follow your son. But obviously this event would set the stage for the eventual authority of Imam Ali, alayhi salam, over the Muslim nation, announced by the Prophet at this dinner, but determined by Allah. As we know, however, history would not be kind to Imam Ali, and he would face much opposition to his leadership. Many times during the Prophet's life, he would face opposition from companions. And after the death of the Prophet, the attacks would only increase. Tomorrow, on the 21st day of the month of Ramadan, the day of the martyrdom of Imam Ali, peace be upon him, we'll look at Imam Ali and his relationship with the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah bless him and his family, in the era in Medina. Until then, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.